7.02.03, and I just asked the town clerk if she explained that again to me. Uh, we start our meetings in June, so it's the seventh regular meeting of the year of this council, so for anybody else besides me that was wondering, there it is. If we could have a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Roll call. So, roll call is after the pledge. Come to this. Yeah. Whatever you say is all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I must have changed. Sorry. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. I hope, I hope that's the only thing we disagree on tonight. <laughs> the uh, town clerk would call the, the roll, please. Chairman Roberts. Present. Councilor Barry. Here. Councilor Carson. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Present. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Swift Kayada. Here. Representative Gill. Representative Weaver. Town Manager McGovern. Here. And Town Clerk Lane. Present. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't believe we have any presentations this evening, so we can get right into the reports and correspondence. Anyone that... <laughs> Councilor McGinty, you have the uh, first up. Councilor Barry and I sit on the uh, Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, and we've concluded our work on that committee. Um, for the 2003 fiscal year for the county, which begins January 1st. Uh, they are holding public hearings now. In fact, tonight is a public hearing at 7 o'clock in Naples. Neck on 11-20, which is, I'm not even sure what day it is. Next Thursday? It would be seven days. Next, yeah, Wednesday. yeah exactly. Next Wednesday. Uh, they'll be at 7 p.m. They'll be holding a uh, a public hearing at South Portland at the uh, city offices, city offices at South Portland, if anyone would like to attend. As it stands right now, Cape Elizabeth is looking at a approximate 6.4% tax increase. Our tax, county tax bill this year was $765,361. That will rise to $814,485. So we're looking uh, well over $100,000. Uh, no. Uh, Fifty thousand dollar change. The Portland meeting on the twenty-sixth. And tentatively, Portland meeting on the twenty-sixth. That's at the county courthouse. Yeah. So that's where we stand right now, as far as the county budget. And Thank can you, John. Please say something. Certainly, I, I don't mean to interfere with the council, but I attended the last meeting of the the county budget advisory committee, and the vote to recommend that budget was something like seven to two. I don't know how many other members there were, but Councillor Barry and Councillor McGinty both both voted against it. And the county budget, as proposed, has many new positions. It has uh, a rate of inflation, a rate of increase at several times the rate of inflation. I want to say how extremely proud I was of Cape Elizabeth's representation within that budget advisory committee. And you know, I appreciate the consistency within which both uh, Councilor Barry and McGinty have focused on the county. And you know, it's it's very very disappointing that some of the other elected officials who serve on that budget advisory committee while they take one set of actions at the county budget advisory committee when it comes to spending uh, you know they take another in their own communities and uh, Councilor Barry and McGinty are consistently conservative in both places and you know it, it's uh, well you know I don't agree or disagree on the appropriateness of that here uh, it, it is good to see uh, that they they really ask good questions although it's you know, one of the questions at the last meeting was how much was the budget up percentage increase and none of the county commissioners or county staff could answer it. All they kept citing was the tax increase and not the expenditure increase. So I, I want to, because one taxpayer in Cape Elizabeth expressed my appreciation <laughs> to John and Henry uh, for what I observed that evening and what they've been doing. Thank you. It even brought a letter to the editor against me. <laughs> thank you for bringing that to our attention. Sure. Chairman Roberts, I just have a question for Council McGinty. So that public hearing, just so the, the viewers understand, that public hearing is for members of the public who want yes. to come and comment upon Indeed. the proposed budget yes. that is going before the commissioner. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else that has anything they'd like to report? Councilor Lynch. I would just like to report as a member of the school building committee, uh, and I know most of the council is aware of this, but perhaps the public is not. The school building committee did make a recommendation to the school board, which was received by the school board last night. The school board will hold a workshop next uh, Tuesday, November 19th at 6.30 in the high school library. 
and the public is always welcome to attend that. And um, the school board will vote on, on the, their recommendation for a project at the December meeting, which I believe is December 10th. At that point, it will come to the council, and um, the public will ha still have ample opportunity to participate and um, make, make known their views. So I just wanted the public to be aware of um, what is coming ahead and that the final decision um, will, rep will rest with the council, if not the public, if we put it out to referendums. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor swift -Gayetta. Um I just wanted to ask Councilor Lynch a question. Will there be a public hearing held by the um, school board also, do you know? I do not believe the school board will be holding a public hearing. Okay. It will be a recommendation to us, and we would have an opportunity to hold a public hearing. OK. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I've got a number of things I'd like to mention. Number one, that I want to thank everybody that did come out and vote. Uh, another very smooth election run flawlessly. In, in two years, we're sending Debbie down to Florida. She's trained Jackie, so Jackie can cover here, and Debbie's going to go down there to, to show them how to run an election. Hanging chairs. <laughs> and since uh, Penny's not here this evening, I mentioned that we have the appointments committee has been meeting, and they've met on five different occasions, interviewing people and getting together to try to put that together. And that is in process of being worked on and trying to plug everybody into a spot. This coming Saturday, the uh, Conservation Commission is going to be down at the new trail uh, for the Highlands, to connect the Highlands Trail with, with Broad Cove. I know if you are interested in working on trails, uh, they would love to have your help. So that's Saturday morning on Two Lights Road, and I believe the time is at 9 o'clock. The planning department could certainly let you know that. The uh, school meeting that was last night, Councillor swift and myself were also there and I want to thank the two of you for both going as well so that we were represented there last night fairly well. And then I wanted to mention that Rihanna and Gill here, uh, for those of you that remember Barbara Gill, Senator Gill, I believe Rihanna Rih is her granddaughter, am I correct? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just a point of reference of who the young lady is that is uh, sitting here for the school department. A lot of you remember Barbara, I'm sure. She was a great uh, state senator for us. Town manager. Her grandfather was the representative John Gill, who was also a very fine gentleman and Teddy served uh, many years ago. So, uh, I just want to congratulate Matthew Sturgis, our town assessor, on his election last Friday as the president of the main chapter of the International Association of Assessing Officials. So, amongst the the, the planner, the codes officer, and the assessor. We now have two presidents of their statewide organizations, and Maureen is, uh, you know, a pretty, I don't know if she's immediate past president, but pretty close to the planners group. So uh, it's nice to see all, all of them up there in leadership positions. And I also want to mention that uh, that office is going to be a little understaffed in the, in the near future with maternity, family leaves, and, uh, you know, we'll see our best through it over the next. Uh, month and a half as uh, two of those individuals uh, are involved in parenting uh, and uh, we wish them all well uh, in the next uh, month and a half as they begin their parenting duties. So. Councilor Berry. Uh, just a, a note, um, a public safety note perhaps. Uh, this is the first meeting I think we've had since uh, daylight saving changed back to standard time and we have a bicycle ordinance in Cape Elizabeth that requires uh, riding single file on bicycles and sometimes if there are two or more bicycles side by side they could present a safety hazard and also uh, people who are jogging along the roads most of them have this uh, uh, fluorescent uh, tape or something on them to, to identify them but uh, just hope that the motorists can be aware that they're there and be careful thank you very much Deborah, would you like a moment to mention the election at all, or did I cover it? Just, just a moment, just to thank everyone um, for their efforts. We did have a 65% voter turnout here in Cape Elizabeth, which is excellent. Um, it was a very long evening, uh, as most of you do know. You went um, home at what time? One o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> next, the next day. Um, again, thank you to our election staff, our warden, Henry Adams, our deputy registrars, our election staff, our deputy town clerk, Jackie Coy, 
um, as you indicated, it did go smoothly. And I think every part of the election law we hit on that day. So as an election supervisor, it was very challenging. And uh, it did go well. Um, we did have some lines on election day, but that's good. Um, that's what everybody's been striving for is participation. Um, so those that were observing for the entire day, uh, whether they be political groups, candidates, etc., they, they saw that grassroots efforts really come to light and they were very pleased with that. As I indicated, it was a long day. We had 629 absentee ballots to cast. Unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever may be the case, uh, we did not have a time during the day to vote those, so we had to actually start that process at 8 o'clock. So it took us until 10.30 just simply to vote the absentees, then we had to do write-ins, etc. I had a gentleman in my office as late as 4 o'clock this afternoon who was working for a candidate asking, Deb, why did you take so long? What could you have done to speed it up? And I, as I told him, I said I felt that the people at the polls should be waited on, if you will, um, before I stepped Henry Adams in to check in the um, absentee ballots in the incoming list. I didn't think it was fair to cut the lines with him. So we simply made a decision. We probably knew about 9 o'clock in the morning that that was going to be the case. So again, we prepared for that. We apologize for that. And uh, we'll be talking to the council in future deliberations of possibly um, what we can do to, to change that a little bit. And it has budget implications. So again, there's a, another time and place for that. So again, I thank everyone. And we'll see you in May. Thank you, and please thank your staff uh, from the council as well for, for the great work that they did. Brianna, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, all right. I believe then we can probably dispense with the citizens' discussion. Uh, looking out there, it doesn't look like there's going to be too much on that one. Can we have uh, the minutes we have for both uh, October 9 and the uh, October 24, the special meeting that we had uh, hmm. for the follow up on the issue. Can we have a motion to accept both? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor of accepting the minutes? And I believe it's unanimous, yes. <laughs> Item number 540203, ownership of sewer force mains and pump stations. And I would ask the town manager if he'd give us a quick update on that, how that works. Yes, we have a number of formal agreements with the Portland Water District for the operation of many of, for all of our different pump stations uh, that are part of our sewer system. This merely adds those pump stations and force mains uh, having to do with Cross Hill and Gulfcrest. And, uh, you, there's, there's a couple of little spaces to be filled in on this agreement uh, provided, uh, you know, when uh, certain plans are dated and that will be done before it's filed. I would encourage the council to authorize the town manager to sign the agreement. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on this item? Councilor swift Kayetta. I just have a question for the manager. So is this sort of the standard form, the standard procedure? It is, correct. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? You can show that to be unanimous. Item number 55, 0203, the Gullcrest Master Plan, considering setting a public hearing on December 9 at 7.30 here in the Town Hall. This would be notification. Um, the conserv just as a matter of reference, the Conservation Commission has met with the Town Council in a workshop session. They do have a master plan that they have put together. It is not on the website, but if people are interested, they could uh, view a copy at the town planner's office at, at any time between now and December, and I would recommend that you do that. Uh, it's a, a marvelous piece of property that the town did purchase. It has uh, the fields, the, the ball fields, the public works facility, walking trails, open space. It's all part of this plan and how the town uh, plans to proceed in the future. So at, with that, I guess I would ask if someone would move to uh, set the public hearing. I'll so move. Second. And the date again was on, the, uh, on December 9. Thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Uh, I just That's have a quick minor question. It says with proper notice. Uh, how is notice given to the people in town? This is a, a, a plan that the Conservation Commission has worked long and hard on, and it's a beautiful plan. But how is notice going to be given? 
It, it just says proper notice thereof. What, what constitutes I believe the town manager can, the, besides the, this meet notice of the, the meeting tonight, yeah. in addition. The, the, the proper notice as defined in the in the draft council order is, is the legal advertisement in the okay. Portland Press Herald. In addition to that, in this instance, we uh, plan to notify the immediate abutters mm -hmm. uh, to the property. There'll also uh, uh, be an article on our web page uh, regarding it. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions, discussion? All in favor, uh, Councilor? Well, I'm, I'm just thinking that don't we usually have copies of reports like this at the library so that it's easy for people to look at? Um, you know, maybe when the town... If there isn't, we can right. certainly ask that that, that happen. Yeah. We're also going to try, and I don't uh, try to get it as a uh, PDF file on uh, the connection to the web page. It's not currently there, but we'll look to try to do that over the next day or two. Yeah, that would be good if we could have it there. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Show that to be unanimous as well. Item number 560203, proposed dependences to the General Assistance Ordinance and a consideration of a public, setting a public hearing again on December 9. And as a point of reference, the General Assistance Program is uh, operated uh, and mandated by state statute and the, every town and uh, city must run the program. The uh, state statute provides that you have to have certain set limits and uh, mi both minimums and maximums. And each town has provided, a, generally in October, a copy of these minimums and maximums. And the, the town of Cape Elizabeth adopts them as presented by MMA, uh, May Municipal in this particular case. Uh, that there's a, so that is how that works. And, um, it's fairly routine, but again, if anyone would like to come to speak to it, they certainly may, and that would be available uh, in, at the manager's office in this particular case. So can we have a motion to send this to a public hearing? So moved. Second. And a second. Any discussion, questions? Which comes first? Goutcrest first, and then the... Uh, uh, they're both set for 7.30. They're both set, but I don't... I guess it'd probably be whichever one the, the town manager thinks of first when he's writing them down. I'm sorry, I asked. <laughs> no, no real order. Uh, any, any real discussion? <laughs> Seeing that, all in favor. And you can show that to be unanimous. Item number 570203, receipt of a memorandum on professional services. Uh, consideration of acknowledging receipt of a report on the professional services utilized by the town that uh, the manager would refer to the council and I will ask him if he would also give a little more detail on that as well one of the thank you Mr. chairman one of the town council goals this year is to quote review the town's relationship with our municipal attorneys and auditors and to receive a report from the town manager on all professional services contracted by the town and what I've done here is present an overview of those professional services with commentary on, on all and indicate that, you know, from a, st a staff perspective, we're pleased with our legal services, our audit services, our computer maintenance services, our engineering services. We're also pleased with our banking services, but uh, recognize that it's time to put them out to bid. And we'll do so in the next month or so. And then comment here upon other professional services. Now, I'd be happy to answer any questions the council may have uh, this evening or, or at any point in the future. Uh, is deemed by the council. Thank you very much. Are there any questions this evening or any, or any discussion? In fact, we don't have, I don't believe we had the motion yet, did we either? Yeah. So, can we have a motion then to accept, uh, to get it rolling here? Okay, I move to accept the report. And a second? Second. A second from... To, to accept it, meaning receive it. To receive Correct. it. Correct. All right. Now, any discussion? Council I, I guess I, I would just like to... Um, have this scheduled for our council workshop so that we can have um, a more informal exchange with the town manager and certainly it would be noticed and anyone in the public who cares to attend could care to attend but um, I, I think it would make sense to do that I don't see any pressing need for the next workshop which I believe is tomorrow night but at some point if we could schedule a workshop on this there wouldn't be enough notice tomorrow night to put it on that agenda anyways Maybe December. 
would likely be December 12th. That's it. On December 12th, we had it penciled in as a tentative date, and there's nothing on that agenda for now, so I would ask the manager, unless something more pressing comes up, that we we perhaps put it on for that evening. Any objections for any of the other councillors? And we're tentatively scheduled, at least at this point, then for the, for the side and be heard on, uh, in a workshop on Thursday, December 12th. Uh, can any further discussion? Questions? All in favor of uh, accepting? Receiving. 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 <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, did you say the workshop was December 12th? Yes, Thursday, December 12th. Thank you. And that concludes the, the regular agenda. Uh, we again have citizens discussions and no one has shown up. I would just, before we adjourn, I would like just mention that tomorrow evening the council is going to be meeting with the planning board. Uh, again, this is one of our goals to try to meet with some of the uh, larger uh, boards and commissions. We have met with the zoning board and the, tomorrow with the planning board. We've met with the conservation commission previously. One of the items I believe people will be discussing is the town center plan. Uh, it's an opportunity for the planning board to uh, explain to us how they are working with this, if they're having problems with it, and the council to exchange that as well. And it's uh, an opportunity for the council to let the planning board and other boards we've met know that we appreciate the efforts that they are doing. And following this meeting, we are also going to meet briefly uh, as the Thomas Jordan trustees, where we uh, discuss with the town manager on that, the funding. And I believe there was another item that the manager wished to discuss as well. Yeah, the, yeah just briefly this evening. And I would like to mention, tomorrow night, one of the council members, when they saw the agenda, when they saw this professional services agenda, they asked for an update on where we stood with all the goals. And I plan to provide a written outline for tomorrow night and then to briefly go over that uh, at the conclusion of the planning board workshop. I haven't written it yet, but I, I will be doing it in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. At that, I believe we could have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Oh, second. Moved a couple of times and seconded a couple of times. So, <laughs> all in favor. Thank you, everyone. Join us again the next time. <laughs>